If you've seen my videos before, Stan is probably a familiar face, but if you're new to the channel, um, I guess he's not. I got him a little over two years ago, and he's between 12 and 13 years old now. Like many of the animals that come here, they come from people of all types, some of which who are really good at caring for animals, and others kind of struggle. And Stan's owner definitely struggled. A quick summary of his care, he was on calci sand and I think a 20 gallon or maybe a 40 gallon, eating just really cheap, generic, bearded dragon pellets. He had water and that's about it. He didn't really have much else and he survived like that for just about 10 years, which is already impressive in itself. So I've already done an update on him for the one year point like mile marker and I've also done a couple other videos on him so there's plenty for you to see. If you want to learn more about Stan and more about how he's changed and stuff you can definitely go watch the playlist just called Stan and there's probably like an hour's worth of content of Stan. But today for the two year update on how he is doing I want to talk about what my predictions were when I got him and how these turned out because I kind of had predictions for like one and a half to two years in the future because I felt like I was experienced enough with bearded dragons to pretty much guess what would happen. But a spoiler, all of my predictions were wrong. There's three main ones I want to cover. The first is that Stan would be dead. Bearded dragons, I'd say the average beardy probably does not live long at all. Of course the average, you're taking every single beardy alive and then finding the average, I don't know how else to describe it. So it's probably like a bunch of beardies only living for one to two years and then a bunch that are living much longer because they're either going to be in really bad care or pretty good care. There really doesn't seem to be much of a middle ground in general. However, they are definitely hardy and some still break through and manage to survive. In other words, the actual lifespan of a beardie in captivity is probably way lower than it would be if everyone at least did some basic research and <laughs> figured out kind of what to do. But for that reason, the average um, age is super low and we don't even know what it is because most people don't really document or mention when their pet that they got from Petco died. Like there's not really data on that. So who knows? I would say that for a healthy bearded dragon, 13 or 12 or so is certainly impressive, but not unheard of. But with Stan's condition, I would consider this to be impressive. And it just shows how crazy resilient they can be, how much their bodies just want to survive and how they'll do anything that they can. To, is he alive? I'm pretty sure he's alive. He hasn't moved this entire time, of course, but they do anything they can to keep their organs moving and stay alive. Even if it means a lot of pain and suffering and stuff, their bodies will go into survival mood and do what it needs to do. So yeah, I'll be honest, when I got him, I, I thought maybe he had I probably would have said six to 12 months of good time left and then he'd either be just so old and kind of crippled to where he might need to be euthanized or even just die himself. And I think that's the reason I'm, he, everyone's kind of always joking how he's probably dead or how he's probably gonna die tomorrow. It's gonna be awkward when he does die because it won't be a joke anymore. But I feel like he's just living on extra time at this point and that's kind of one of the great things about him. My second prediction was that he would be an extremely picky eater and only eat. I think it was Zoomed pellets he was being fed. If you look at the ingredients, they're just not great, um, in my opinion, for bearded dragons. And that was all he was eating. They were just brown and I, I think they were feeding them to him dry, but you're supposed to, if you're gonna use them, add water, but I don't recommend using pellets for any lizards, I don't think. But that aside, it was super hard to get him to eat. And he didn't eat for about two to three weeks with us, which, with certain animals, that's kind of normal. It's like you get a lizard and it's kind of scared in this new environment, it's not adjusted yet. So food isn't its main priority because it can go super long without eating. And Stan was like that. And so I, I threw away the pellets and then I had to go buy more pellets. But as you see in the first video that I got him, he actually ended up eating immediately. And I thought that he, it would be pellets, but it was actually, I think a dubia roach. And then it was tomatoes of all things because tomatoes aren't even the best for them, but he loves his tomatoes as you may know. So th that totally caught me off guard from the start because I was like, I'm gonna be after buying like Zoomed pellets for this stupid bearded dragon forever because he's not gonna eat anything else. Maybe he'll start nibbling on things that look or smell similar, but to my amazement, it just switched. He started eating anything and everything after a while. And I'd say now, I don't even know if he has a favorite food. He eats so much stuff. It probably is still tomato, but he just likes for anything that makes it look like he's covered in blood, whether it's tomatoes, raspberries, strawberries, or bugs in general. This seem to be his favorites. And my third prediction with this small boy is that his metabolic bone disease would maybe stop getting worse, but definitely not get better. I just see metabolic bone disease as an animal that improperly developed 
it's bones, usually due to, I mean, kind of always due to husbandry, either the diet side or with bearded dragons, possibly due to lighting. So he probably didn't have UVB, which is a type of light that you normally hopefully use with them. And if he's has missing, <laughs> I'm so bad at explaining things, and if he's missing nutrients. Um, from certain foods. So I'm sure it was a mix because he only got pellets and I don't think he had UVB. I think he had a heat lamp, but that was it. It was just a light bulb that generates energy and that does not help his bones develop and build. Whenever we got in animals with metabolic bone disease, which it's super common, it's all the time, Lapragegus, crested geckos, even ball pythons, somehow, I don't know. Sometimes it's just deformations, but usually it's in lizards along with bearded dragons. Uh, turtles as well, it can happen in their shell. It's just basically deformed hard parts of their body. I, whenever we have the animals, we normally only have them for a few months when we then sell them to someone new. They, they never really seem to get much better over time, and I kind of saw this as well. You can stop it, but you can't really reverse it. But Stan has also proved me wrong on this. You can definitely tell he is still very awkwardly shaped and his bones and joints still don't work quite like a normal bearded dragon, but I can't discredit the fact that he has actually managed to improve. I've just had simple UV, just a UV tube on him, switch it out every like six or seven months or so. And I have his heat light on him. I use just like the little halogen bulbs. They get pretty hot in the spot and he enjoys it. I've actually seen changes. He also has a pretty varied diet now. With bugs, he gets mostly dubias, sometimes crickets and sometimes mealworms, but pretty much just dubias for insects. And then veggies, he's got his collards. He eats like anything now, it's so weird. And then, fruits and vegetables, all that stuff. So I think even though he doesn't really grow much anymore because reptiles, they do grow throughout their entire lives. They're not like people where they stop growing and then eventually start shrinking. They do always grow until the day they die, but this slows extremely slowly to the point that you can't even tell that they're growing. So I can't tell Stan grew at all, but I think thanks to him still developing and still growing just a little bit and still shedding and stuff, because he does still shed every few months or so, that's actually been enough for the bones to start to kind of repair themselves and almost get them into place. I'm not a vet. I have no college education in general, so I can't really explain why that is. Maybe some of you can in the comments, but I'm impressed and I'm not complaining. So those are definitely my big three. One, I thought he was dead. Two, I thought he'd only eat pellets up until dying. And then three, I thought that he was stuck in that awkward position forever and his mobility would not get any better. The funny thing is I thought if he did gain mobility, he'd use it, but he actually moves less now. He just is dormant in the same position. Like right now he's actually kind of bloated because I put him just in his water bowl and then he drank a bunch of water. So now he looks kind of like a balloon, <laughs> but he'll just sit literally in the same spot for so long. Even food, he'll just, I'll put it in front of him. He eats it. He doesn't even move. He lifts his tail, he poops, and then he just scoots his butt over two inches so he doesn't sit in it. And, and that's it, that's all of his movement. In some videos, like say I'll film three videos in a week and you see him in the same spot, you might think I filmed all of them at the same time, but no, he just didn't move for seven days because he didn't feel the need to. <laughs> he got enough moisture from his food and I fed him in front of him. So the question is, should I make him be mobile? I mean, I haven't really seen a need to. He's still gotten better without doing so, but it's probably not a bad idea to get him to move. He honestly just does not actually like being handled that much. And of course, like probably the one time he enjoys it is gonna be right now. So yeah, now he's actually pretty chill. It's like he knows when the camera is actually pointed on him and it's only when the camera is not, when he's not the subject, that's when he has to go berserk. Also, he's probably adjusting to the new home because this is a new place, new smells, new views, because he is certainly an observer. He definitely always knows what's going on around him. I don't know if he knows what's going on around him, but he sees what's going on around him and maybe he doesn't comprehend it, but I'll probably set him up behind me somewhere in the, videos and um, that's the two-year update on Stan. If you want to learn more about him and more about the whole process, check out the one-year update and the original video on him. I think it's a really cool cycle to see through. And you can check out all the Meet New Animals playlist, which I'll try to remember to link, where you can see other cases like Stan that are just not quite as popular. But that'll be it for this video. Um, if you want to buy some merch, still got some, but I, I should put some new merch up. I'll, I'll try and do that soon. Um, I need something to plug in a video. Let's say the mailing list. If you go to goharpian.com or emeraldscales.com, you can add your name to the same mailing list. It just passed 27,000 members. And if you're on the mailing list, you get updates when new animals are available, when I'm taking in new animals, when new unboxing videos are up, and pretty much just any updates. It's like the best direct way to contact you. But that'll be it for this video. I'm Alex, and thanks for watching.